Straight to the best of the best. That is the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves me, you, and everyone else out there to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together. I'm gonna put all this together for you in one package, one philosophy, one mindset, one method. I already made it into a book and you got this everyday masterclass that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day and welcome to the show. Today's topic is how to be your own boss. And when I say how to be your own boss, I'm not necessarily talking about in the business world. I'm not talking about being an entrepreneur or a, solo, or a solopreneur necessarily. You can apply it to that, but when I'm talking about being your own boss, I'm talking about in the vein that Malcolm X spoke of in his autobiography, the autobiography of Malcolm X. If you haven't read that book, I suggest you get it. It's written by Alex Haley, but it's all Malcolm X's words. Malcolm X said in that book, every organization must have a boss. Even if it's you by yourself, you must be the boss of yourself. So I want you to understand that though you can apply what I'm going to share with you here today to your business or your work life or your sport or whatever uh, solo endeavor you may be go going into or group endeavor you're going into, even if it's you by yourself, you being a boss, this is about discipline. Being a boss to yourself is the first step to you even qualifying to be a boss of anyone else. So while you can use these principles again to apply to anything specific that you're involved in, understand everything we talk about here today, these go beyond your nine to five or your eight to six or however many hours, your 25, eight, whatever hours you spend working, okay? It goes beyond the work time. This applies to everything that you do in life, you being a boss of yourself. Because if you can't be your own boss, then first of all, you're definitely going to come up short in achieving anything that you set out to achieve. You might not even have any goals if you haven't even thought of being your own boss. If you're not able to hold yourself to the standards that a boss would hold you to and respect those standards the same way you would respect the standards of anyone who has a authority position relative to you in whatever for whatever reason and in whatever sense, if you can't do that for you, and I'm going to explain to you here today how to do that for you, if you can't do that, then you're going to come up way short of fulfilling your potential. You're going to come up way short of doing the things that you really want to do with your life. And when you're faced with a challenge, you're not going to meet, you're not going to be able to meet that challenge, let alone handle and face down that challenge. These are all the drawbacks of not being able to be a boss to yourself. So today, as we get into these points here, let me explain to you how to be a boss to yourself so that none of those negative outcomes occur in your life, all right? And when you can become a boss of yourself, what it's gonna mean for you is that you can do the things that you wanna do, you can fulfill your potential, you can reach the levels that you really wanna reach, you can probably find out that the sum of all of your efforts will actually be greater, the whole of all of your efforts, rather, will be greater than the sum of your parts. In other words, if you have three units of skill, you can produce four, five, or 20 units of production not because all of a sudden you came up with more units of skill, but because you're able to take everything that you have and put it all together. And that synergy creates a, a, a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. But let me get into my points before I step on anything I want to share here with you. Again, the topic today is how to be your own boss. Number one thing you must do, you must establish your standards. You're going to be your own boss, you need standards. I knew a guy who ran a brand advertising company for real estate people. So anytime someone was doing any kind of real estate business, commercial real estate, they would call a company like his, this guy that I know, and he would hire them to put together an advertising campaign that they would use to try to find their investors and buyers and get the money that they were going to make. So they saw doing this brand advertisement as an investment into the business because they were going to make even more money on the back end than they were spending on the, the advertising in the first place. And this guy who runs the real estate advertising business, he told me how one time he had a client who had paid him for some work. And he, as the business owner, he handed this work off to one of his employees, somebody on his team. Hey, get this advertising campaign, put this thing together for this client. This is what they want. This is the way it needs to be. I mean, you know what the job is. Go do it. And at the same time that he was handing this work off to someone on his team, he also understood that because his name was on the door. He was the owner of the company. He's the one who was closing the deals. 
he knew that he needed to check on everything that went out of the door of his company before it got sent to a client because the last thing he wanted was wanted somebody on his team to mess up and then it fall back on him and them losing money and all of that because he didn't check on something that was coming out of his doors. So when his team member finished the advertising campaign that was going to be put together and it was like a creative campaign, like visual thing, this guy who owned the company, he took a look at it and he was telling me, and this is the story that he was relaying to me, that he concluded that the work that his team member had done was shitty work. The work just was not good. He had to tear the whole thing apart that his team member had created. And he had to do the whole thing over before sending it out to his client on deadline. Now, why is this? And why am I even sharing this with you? The whole reason, the whole thing that this guy was communicating to me, he didn't say it in so many words, but this is what I got out of it. And this is what I want you to get out of it. And the reason I'm sharing you with this story is that he was communicating to his company and he personally, as the boss, he had standards. There were certain levels of performance that needed to be met for anything that was going to come through that organization. And when something, for example, this work that he had his team member do, did not meet those standards, things are going to have to be done over. Things are going to have to be fixed. Someone's going to have to be reprimanded for that. Anyone who's listened to this who has ever had a job in your life, when you started at that job, how they introduce you. How they introduce you to the job is what I mean. They shows you the ropes and they told you the rules, right? Here's how we do things. This is when you need to show up. Here's where you go when you show up. Here's how you let us know that you have shown up. Here's the work that you're gonna be doing. They show you how to do that work, maybe not in one sentence, but they train you on how to do that work, right? Then they tell you how they're gonna measure your work. They'll tell you how you're gonna know when your job is complete. When do you know that you've actually done what you're supposed to do at a satisfactory level? Here's how you're gonna know that. Here's what's acceptable. Here's what's not acceptable. If you ever have a question, go read this or go watch this or go ask this person over here. Every business does this. Anyone listening to this who's had more than one job, can you agree that any job that you've had, you went through some form of this? Maybe they didn't say it in those exact words, but you went through some form of this where they showed you, here's how things work. Here's what the rules are. Here's all the things that you're going to be doing. Here's all the things you need to know. Here are all the people that you need to know. If you ever have a question or a challenge or a problem, here are the people that you can contact. Maybe they gave it to you in a packet that maybe you read it and maybe you didn't, but all this information was in there because any company that's going to last over an extended period of time, they have to put all this, they have to document all this stuff because if they don't, they can get sued and end up being out of business completely. Every business does this. And you know what? You are a business. Even if you don't own a company, even if you have never generated a single dollar of revenue in your life, you personally are a business. As I've said many times, it costs money for you to be born. It will cost money for you to be buried and it costs money the entire time in between. All right. You slept in a bed last night. All right. That bed wasn't free. You turned on the lights when you woke up this morning. If it was dark outside, you turn on the lights. OK, those lights ain't free. You got a phone right now that you're listening to this on. That phone's not free. Do you pay a service fee every month to keep that phone activated? Of course you do. You have Wi-Fi in your house. Are you wearing clothes right now? Have you eaten any food today? None of those things were free. Maybe they were free to you and that you didn't come directly out of your pocket for it, but somebody paid for it. Even if you didn't, somebody's paying for it. And in some way, shape or form, you are paying them back for what you're using that is quote unquote free to you. So in other words, you're a business. All right, that's the point that I'm making here. Business is the exchange of resources between people. You are using resources and you're giving up resources. That's called business. So what are your standards? Since you're a business, what are the standards for your business? Oh, you haven't thought of that. You don't, you don't have any standards for your business and you should get some because no thriving business is without standards. And any business that doesn't have standards is probably not doing too much. All right, it's probably not creating too much success because nobody knows what the standard is. No one knows what's supposed to be going on there. And when I say no one, if you're a business of just one person, I'm, I'm referring to you. What are your standards? What's acceptable? What's not acceptable? If you don't stand for something, as they say, you will fall for anything. So figure out where you stand as a business, you individually as a person, and then you can extrapolate that out to everything else that you get involved in. But just you as an individual outside of your job, outside of your sport, outside of anything that you do every day, you need to know personally where you stand. And if you don't stand anywhere, then you're going to be sitting or laying somewhere. Point number two, today's topic is how to be your own boss. Number two, take no shorts. Jay-Z has a line in one of his songs where he says, if you owe me $10, you ain't giving me nine. 
And it's the same what Jay-Z was explaining there. He was talking, I believe he was talking specifically about the business world that he's in. But it's also a great metaphor that you should utilize when you're dealing with yourself. Taking those shorts means when you say the standard is $10, you won't accept $9. If you're working out by yourself at home and nobody's watching, no cameras, no nothing, and you tell yourself that you're going to do 10 push-ups, you can't stop at push-up number eight and then rationalize it away and say, well, I'm not going to do push-ups number nine and 10 because nobody else knows about it. Nobody's going to see it. Listen, you know about it. You saw it. And as I've talked about many times here before, if you set a standard for yourself of, again, we can use this as a metaphor, doing 10 push-ups, and then you only do eight, and then you don't do those last two push-ups, and you just tell yourself that it's okay, and you rationalize it as, uh, who cares, nobody's going to know about it. That's the story you tell yourself. Here's the problem with that. You are training yourself to understand that when you set a standard, the standard doesn't actually matter. You could tell yourself that is 10, but then you do eight and it doesn't matter. So that means the next time you tell yourself you're gonna do something, you're also, your subconscious mind is gonna remind you of the fact that you didn't listen to yourself last time. No, oh, well, the thing you said you were gonna do last time, you didn't do it, so this thing you're saying this time, you're probably not gonna do that either. So you're conditioning yourself to not trust yourself, to not respect yourself, to not uphold your own standards, and to believe that your standards, don't, your standards aren't really standards, right? they're just words. Are you just paying lip service to yourself? When you know that you're not living up to what you said you're going to do, that's worse than anybody else knowing. And this is how a lot of people get it backwards in life. They think that all right, if a bunch of people are watching me and a bunch of people see me and I mess up, then that's worse than if only I see me mess up. No, it's worse if you see you mess up and nobody else knows about it because that's the standards that you're holding yourself to. All right? And you got to live with you. All right? Regardless of what anybody else says about you or knows about you or thinks they know about you or has some opinion about you, you always are going to have to be with you. All right? You got to go to sleep with you. You got to wake up with you every single day. That's the most important. The most important standard that you have to live up to, again, is the one that you set for yourself, not the one that anybody else has for you or thinks that you have for yourself or what they decide to say about you or what you think they think about you. The most important one is how you see yourself. And that should be reason enough for you to uphold your own standards. The same way that if you had a personal trainer and the trainer said do 10 push-ups, you wouldn't get the push-up number eight and then just tell the trainer, look, I don't want to do the last two. I ain't doing them. All right, you got to show you, you would do those last two push-ups because you respect that trainer enough and you paid them to push you. So if you don't feel like going to the last two, the very reason you hired the trainer is so that you could get pushed to do the last two that you wouldn't do on your own. So if you need to get some help with upholding your standards, go get some help. But make sure whatever standards you set for yourself, you are finding some way, shape, some way of upholding those standards. Uh, whether you got to get some help from somebody else, whether you can push yourself on your own, whatever you got to do. All right. By hook or crook, you, when you, once you set the standard, the standard must be upheld. And if you're not upholding that standard, then you might as well not even have the standard. Actually, you don't have the standard in the first place. And you respect your trainer enough or your boss or anyone who has authority in relation to you enough that you're not going to just quit on what they're telling you to do. They would demand it of you. You got to demand the, your standards of yourself. Whatever your standard is, you got to set, you got to make those demands of yourself and you must uphold those demands. Meaning if you tell yourself I'm waking up at 6 a.m. so I can go to the gym and get this workout in, right, you can't hit that snooze button at 6 a.m. You got to get up out the bed at 6 a.m. because you respect yourself. Like if you had a boss who said, wake up at 6 a.m., you will wake up at 6 a.m. So how can you respect them more than you respect yourself? I mean, that, that doesn't even make sense to me. What I, I call that hustling backwards. And as the saying goes, when you're hard on yourself, life is easy on you. And when you're easy on yourself, life is hard on you. Well, which way do you want? Point number three, today's topic is how to be your own boss. Number three, bosses must command respect and they always represent what they want everyone else to follow. You think about the most effective bosses or leaders that you have worked with or worked for in your life or think about the times when you have been most effective as a boss or a leader you are a person who or that person that you're thinking of was a person who commanded respect by the way that they carried themselves not because they walked around and said hey show me respect but by the way they carried themselves the way that they showed up every single day the energy that they exuded the way that other people like yourself felt when that person walked into or out of the room and they always represented 
what they wanted everyone else to follow. So this is what a leader does. A leader shows by example through their energy how they want everybody else to show up. They don't have to tell you, hey, you need to do this and do that. They do it and you see them doing it and you just follow their lead. That's what makes them a leader. The fact that you are voluntarily following the example that they set. They don't have to tell you to do it. They can just show you what they want you to do and then you just follow it naturally because that's what leaders do. People naturally, voluntarily choose to follow what that person has going on. Whether that be through their energy, the way that they talk, the way they deal with other people, the way that they show up, going the extra mile, whatever it is that person's doing, if you're voluntarily choosing to follow their example, that's what makes them a leader. And when you're in your most effective, you're at your most effective, you are doing the exact same thing. Whether, again, it could be just you by yourself doing it or there could be people with you doing it. But you as the boss, you command respect, always represent what you want everyone else to follow. And if you're not living up to your own stated standards as the boss of your own life, the boss of your own organization, you are by default, by example, telling everyone else that the standards don't really matter. And actually, they don't even exist. There are no standards because nobody's upholding the person in charge is not upholding the standard. The person in charge is not living up to their stated standards. Well, how do you think anybody else would ever want to follow a standard that you yourself are not living up to and you're the one who created it? And does that even make sense? Which means this, you as the boss of your own organization, you must always represent what you want to see. Whatever you want other people around you to do, you must represent that. So if you want other people to speak to you calmly and rationally and respectfully, you should speak to other people calmly, rationally and respectfully. If you want everyone else around you to respect your time and respect your wishes and honor your requests, then you must respect your time, honor your wishes and honor your requests. All right. if whatever you want other people to do unto you, you must do unto them. All right. Some people know that as the golden rule. But you notice that I even stated in different ways and whether we're applying it to life, whether we're applying it to your relationships, whether we're applying it at work, whether you're just applying it to yourself personally, it's a universal idea. No matter which way you decide to language it, whatever you want from others, you must be yourself. If you have people who are following you, you have people who are working for you, you have people who you know are looking at your example and a little bit of your example is going to rub off on them or maybe a lot of your example is going to rub, rub off on them. Whether that be you have people in your audience on the internet, whether you have kids who are probably going to mimic damn near everything that you're doing even when you think they're not paying attention or you have anyone else in whatever position. You have people who are working for you at your company or people who are... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Subordinate to you. You're a supervisor at the company. Maybe you don't own the company, but you're a supervisor and there's some people who have to listen to you and they're following your lead. Understand, these people are going to do whatever you're doing. Again, even when you think they're not noticing what you're doing, they're going to be doing what you're doing. You might think they didn't see that, but they know. So if you have people following you, ask yourself the question, what do you want them to do? How do you want them to represent themselves and and by extension, represent you because everybody knows that they came from you. So if you have children and you set a certain example, your children are going to go out there and they're going to mimic that example. All right, what do you want them to be out there doing? Are you doing it? Not are you saying it, not are you telling them it, but are you doing it? Because as the saying goes, as what I've heard, your children don't do what you say. They do what you do. So whatever you're out there representing, that's pretty much what they're going to go out there and represent. Again, even if it's the exact opposite of what you said, all right, they're not going to follow what you said. They're going to follow what you did. So if you have no one with you right now, let's say you don't have anyone to follow your example. You don't have anyone who is looking at you and watching you and doing what you're doing. All right, no kids. You don't have any employees. You don't have anyone around you right now. It's just you right now. All right, just, you are literally a, a one person organization. Imagine that you did have some people following you. How would you want them to show up? How would you want them to work? How would you want them to respect your ideas and your standards? That's the person. And when you answer that question, you should answer the question. That's who you need to be right now. Once you get all the, everything that answers that question, how would you want someone to show up and do their job and respect the standards? If there was somebody who was, whose very job was just listen to and follow everything that you did, you need to become that person right now. If there was a camera just following you around all day and everything that you do, 
you get a clone. You get somebody to clone you and they're going to do everything that you do. You need to show on that camera the type of person you want that person to be. I've hear, I hear uh, entrepreneurs say this often. They say, you know, I have so many ideas and so many things that I want to do, but it's only so much time in the day. I only have two hands. I can only be in one place at a time. I wish I could clone myself. You ever hear any entrepreneurs who are listening to this or any busy people? or who are really passionate about what you do, you've probably used this phrase before. I have thought this before myself. Like, man, if I had another one of me working right next to me, I'd get a whole lot more done every single day. Well, here's the thing. Imagine that you did have that other person, that clone of you working right next to you every single day. But here's the, the rub is that they don't know what you know. They don't know your job. They don't know what to do. They got to be trained from zero. All right. They'll do whatever you train them to do, but you must train them. Now, here's how you're going to train them. You can't talk to them. You're not allowed to tell them what to do. You're not allowed to tell them, hey, do this and then do this and then do this. You're not allowed to explain anything. The only way you can train them is through your actions. Okay, so they this is basically imagine that they're, they're deaf. They can't hear and they can't read at least nothing. They can't hear anything that you said and they can't read anything that you write. They can hear and they can read, but it's not from you. They can only learn from you through your actions. So your actions is exactly how you train them. So if they were to watch a video of your last 24 hours, all right, is that the type of employee you want working for you? This is something for you to think about as we recap today's topic, which is how to be your own boss. Malcolm X said in his autobiography, every organization must have a boss. Even if it's you by yourself, you must be the boss of yourself. So what we're talking about here today is about discipline. Being a boss to yourself is the first step of qualifying you to be a boss to anyone else. So you can use these principles at work, but these are, are what I'm talking about here today are principles you need to apply in your life. When you apply them in your life, they're going to leak into your work by default. Point number one, establish your standards. When you started a job, if you've ever had a job before, when you start, what do they do at first? They train you. They, should, they give you an, an initiation period by showing you how things go, right? Here's how we do things. This is where you show up. This is what you do. This is what your job is. This is how we measure your work. This is how you know the job is done. This is what's acceptable. This is what's not acceptable. If you have a question, you go ask this person over here or read this document over here. And every business does this. Every successful business does it. And guess what? You're a business. And if you're 25 or 43 or 56, you have been successful. You've been in business for 25 or 43 or 56 years. Now right, your business has been around for a while. Most businesses don't make it that long. Therefore, you better have some standards. What is acceptable and what's not? If you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Point number two, take no shorts. Jay-Z said, if you owe me $10, you ain't giving me nine. It's the same thing dealing with yourself. If you say you're going to do 10 push-ups, you can't stop at eight and then say it's okay because nobody saw it. All right, you saw it. All right, you're the most valuable audience there is to you. It's not about what your, your YouTube subscribers saw or the people who follow you on Facebook saw. It's about what you saw because you don't have to live with those people on the Internet. All right, you got to live with you forever. All right, those people will come and go. You will always be here. So you got to start demanding the same thing of yourself that your boss or your trainer or your parent when you were a kid would demand of you. When you're hard on you, life is easy on you. When you're easy on you, life is hard on you. And point number three, command respect and always represent what you want everyone else to follow. If you are not living up to your own standards, you're letting everyone else know that there are, in effect, no standards, which means you got to always represent what you want to see. So if people are following you, what do you want them to do? If you have no one with you, imagine that you did. Imagine that you had someone, a clone of you, and the only way they can learn what to do is by watching your actions. They can't hear you and they can't read anything you write. You just have to act out what you want them to do. How would that person be working if they followed you around for a day? That's the person that you need to become right now the example setter of whatever you would want a clone of you to be doing you need to be setting that example with your actions every single day how about you start right now work on your game dre all day